It was a dangerously stormy night. Everyone in my family was doing their own thing. I was in my room watching TV. My parents were in the living room. They were watching some sort of comedy show and my sister was playing video games upstairs. I usually enjoyed stormy nights like this because it made me feel relaxed. I was relaxed until there was a monstrous bang on my window. I jumped up and looked outside. There was someone outside my window but the large amount of rain pouring down the window kind of blurred his face. He started pounding at my window. It sounded like he was screaming for help. I opened the window just a crack and he screamed to let me in. I'm hurt. The rain was so loud I had to scream at him to come around the front. Then I shut my window. I ran outside to the living room to tell my dad that there's a man who seems to be in distress and screaming for help outside. And then came the knocks and the shouts for help outside our front door. My dad was about to open the front door but I stopped him. I said wait because I wasn't sure if this was a good idea. When the phone rang and on the TV it displayed the caller ID of our next door neighbour. My dad ran to pick it up. When I heard him say no way, I knew something was up. He hung up the phone and said stay away from the door. He didn't explain why, where he said he saw a guy crouched down, pounding on the door, holding some kind of large sharp tool. My dad yelled through the front door at the man to go away before the cops get here. Then he actually got on the phone with the cops. Eventually the man outside gave up and he disappeared. The next time we checked, when my dad was on the phone with the neighbour, he told my dad that he saw a homeless man rummaging through his shed and came out with a large chopping axe. The cops found the crazed man wandering around the streets and they made it in the newspapers a few days later. My grandpa recently told me a story. It was about a night he took his dog for a walk. He used to have a small Boston Terrier named Sherry, who he named after an old friend who passed away. My grandpa lives like two hours away from us on a farm and there's not much that goes on. He lives with his wife Mary Ann, who married him like 15 years back. Every day Mary would take Sherry for a walk in the morning and my grandpa would take her for a walk in the evening on a regular walk during sunset. My grandpa was walking Sherry down the usual dirt path that rang along the woods next to their property. My grandpa passed by another person on the trail who Sherry instinctively barked and pulled towards like most dogs do when they see strangers. My grandpa said hello to the stranger who had a large hood up but the stranger just walked past without even batting an eye so he and the dog kept walking. Sherry kept looking back every so often and barking however my grandpa was telling him to shush and yank on his leash to keep him walking. Eventually, my grandpa would turn around to look at what Sherry could be barking at. The stranger who passed him a few minutes earlier was stalking him from behind a tree in the near distance. My grandpa decided to pick up the pace as fast as possible. At his old age, he always carries pepper spray in his big coat pocket just in case. He was getting closer to his house when suddenly, he heard clicks from the leaves on the ground inching behind him. But before he could turn, he felt the warmth of a glove cover his mouth and nose, preventing him from screaming or breathing. My grandpa says he could hear Sherry barking and biting at the stranger, which might have helped him loosen in the man's grip a little. My grandpa says he struggled to grab the pepper spray out of his pocket, but when he did, he sprayed it at least 10 times and continued spraying it, even after the man who was holding him let go and started screaming. My grandpa came as close as he could to a run to escape back to his house. It was perfectly okay. One night, when I was a really young kid, I was in the living room watching my favourite cartoons. I had the TV pretty loud, but I thought I could hear my mom calling my name from downstairs. I called back. What? She didn't answer, so I guess she couldn't hear me. I heard her call me again, so I went down to the basement. The lights were off, so halfway down, I called for my mom again. She did not answer. I didn't know where she could be calling me from, but one thing was for certain. She wasn't in the basement. I started going back up the stairs, but before I could even get to the top of the stairs, I heard my mom's voice again from down in the basement calling my name. I looked down into the pitch blackness. I ran back up to the top step, turned on the lights and walked halfway back down, peeking inside the basement. I didn't see my mom anywhere down there. Suddenly, I got a huge rush of horror. I ran up the stairs basically crying for my mom. She came rushing down the stairs from upstairs and I cried to her that something was calling me from downstairs that sounded just like her. She swore to me that she hadn't been calling me. She went down to the basement to check and make me feel better, but I didn't feel better. I'm sure she didn't believe me. Why would she? I was a little kid, but I still know that I heard what I heard.